Hey, I'm Eric Triplett, The Pond Digger. Today we're back on set with Sean McHenry at Mystic Koi in Upland, California. And we're gonna dive in to look through his eyes on what to look for when picking out fish. Yeah, uh, one thing I wanted to mention, um, it's my job to, uh, you know, to buy and sell koi. So I'm a koi dealer, right? And that, that eye I have for koi is different than the Sean McHenry who's the All Japan Koi Show judge. Right. Yes. Uh, sometimes I have to wear like two different hats sometimes. Well, and that's interesting. You say that you almost have to wear multiple hats because you have to look through the eyes of your customers, like because they see things differently, right? Absolutely. Okay, so you wear a lot of hats. That's yeah. Good. So, um, so, um, well, and I kind of wanted to point that out because as I'm picking fish out and uh, talking about what I pick, I'm I'm genuinely telling you like the koi that I that I want, right? So that might not necessarily be the right koi for the koi show that day because I'm picking fish for perhaps the future tomorrow or uh, what I you know what I think will look good in, in my pond so to speak so okay. I think that's real important that, that I talk about that I think it is too yeah. so today we have uh, some really cool old Chiba old Chiba Shigure one of uh, one of my favorite koi very cool um, tell us the story behind the, this color what does it mean and all that yeah sure so uh, so Ochiba is um, is uh, Representing a beautiful like uh, lake in a fall day, right? So the so the cloud cover is is shining through the sun, and it kind of gives the the lake sort of this gray like kind of tone tonality. And uh, since it's also in the fall, um, we have all these uh, dead well just after fall we have these dead brown leaves on top of the water floating. Right, it paints a really beautiful picture. Absolutely. Uh, these are these are two year olds. These are from uh, Igarashi. Um, uh, Igarashi Kazuto, like he's good, good bud. Um, yeah. We're still looking for Kohaku pattern, right? You got it, exactly, yeah. exactly. Uh, because Igara uh, cause Ochiba is kind of a, an unusual um, variety. Uh, you're not always left with a real consistent Kohaku pattern. Uh, it's really, really hard for me to find good Ochiba these days. Uh, that have everything that I want in them. So it's, it's kind of nice to talk about these three because uh, they each possess different qualities that are that are nice. So so just as you mentioned, we're looking for a nice nice Kohaku pattern. Uh, and this koi here, it's got nice nice face pattern here. That's pretty pretty typical. Nice second stop. And then it's a uh, we get a we get a little lost in the in the back side of it here but to be honest with you uh old chiba because old chiba is this uh falling leaves pattern um this sort of uh speckly messiness to me doesn't bother me i think it looks i think it looks just fine it looks very interesting um as opposed to if it would be a kohaku is that is yeah, that the reference like to kohaku yeah okay. exactly like a solid step uh this old chiba here uh, has a really really rich color. It's almost like a like a, a copper color. It's much more it has like a red tonality to it, uh, which is which is really really neat. Um, something that's real important about Ochiba um, is when we're talking about the color, um, that color is completely up to up to the hobbyist or up to the koi judge or up to me of the day of what you happen to like, right? So yeah, meaning red isn't better than light brown. Um, it's, but it could be for you, right? Sure. Um, but one thing that's really cool about this this Ochiba here is it has just a really really awesome face pattern. Uh, we see a little bit of brown on the nose there. Yeah. Um, that may or may not go away. Uh, we'll see. Um, a lot of times when these fish are young, they're kind of rubbing their face on the tanks and stuff like that. Sure. And that'll cause a. Uh, That'll cause that sort of darker color, and it'll actually go away. Um, but I love, love the, the traditional like Kohaku face pattern we have here. For sure. And then uh, third, we have uh, this fellow right over here. This probably has the most uh, traditional, let's get out of the way here, guy. Um, this has the most traditional Kohaku pattern. Um, it has a nice face step, and it's if you look at it, it's really, really intricate here on the face. Sure. Um, and then, so we have a step pattern here, and then we have a nice long step pattern here. And it's an even consistency as far as the, the color development goes, and that's really important. Um, 
Can we expect the colors to change a little bit on the on the red? Because this one seems to be maybe the darkest. Yeah, definitely the darkest, and it'll probably the lightest. All three will darken up as they mature, and that reticulation will happen. Uh, there's a reticulation on all three of these koi, and it's most noticeable on on this fish here. Yeah. Um, so as the fish matures, we can hope to see that reticulation develop even further um, on it, all three. Uh, does it have a soggy in this bloodline? Is that where that's coming uh, from? Or? I believe so. I believe so. So I guess the question is where we go from there. You've, you've kind of talked to us about the good qualities that you like about them. So we want to know which one goes in your pond. Yeah. 